And now a message from our sponsor. Hey everybody, it's Bootleg Captain, Captain Bootlegs here. Yeah! If you're like me, I bet you're enjoying this Toys, Toys on Tap, Tap podcast. I am enjoying it, it's very nice. But did you know you can enjoy it more just by joining that Patreon? Oh, I did not know that. There are so many cool perks available on the Patreon for you. There's <laughs> and also <laughs> and and wow, that's really a lot of stuff if you ask Bootleg Captain. Captain I don't Bootleg. understand, there were noises I couldn't hear with the perks. So join today to support Toys on Tap podcast and Bootleg Art Toys. But if you're not in a position to join the Patreon, head on over to Apple iTunes and review and subscribe. That helps out the channel as well. Okay, I'll go rate it, I guess. And remember, listen to Toys, Toys on Tap. Tap. Captain Bootleg, the bootleg captain sent you. Why did he keep referring to himself in the third Can person? I stop with the stupid voice now? I'm not sure why you made me want to sound like a pirate. Oh, so that was a fake voice. Oh, yucko! I didn't realize it was just a pretend voice. Oh. Yeah, um, it's good to see you. I've never actually met you in person, so it's, I don't think, have I? Um, have you, uh, would you have been at Designer Con in this last one? I was, yeah, I was in, um, I was sharing a booth with Candy Bolton and Buona Spoons. Uh, and I was oh, in the oh. Creature Bazaar section. Yeah, I might have come just, like, real quick. Slide through. High. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. but hey, and no, uh, there have been so many people. That was the first one back after the pandemic. So yeah, um, right. Yeah. So uh, hey, I'm not even worried about it. I I'm gl glad that you like clicked in when you did. I was watching this video and I got you. You ever see a video that's so funny you get stuck in a loop and you just have to keep rewatching it because something. Oh yeah. Like, this dopamine rush is happening. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I do. It's this little girl that like it takes a bite of something that is just not doing well for her, and her mom's like, "How is it?" And she goes, "It's good," and then almost throws up and smiles, and she's like, "It's awesome." <laughs> I've seen that video. Have you? Oh, it's, it's classic. Yeah, so good. It's like it reminds me. I'm gonna probably do a TikTok with it for like, how do you like toys on tap? It's good. <laughs> <laughs> nice little gag. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I'm so stoked that uh, we were able to make this work. I yeah, like, you're I appreciate it. Of course, of course. I you know I I scour Instagram because Toys on Tap. Uh, I don't know if you've heard an episode, but Toys on Tap is like just about toy artists, and so I'm always yeah. looking for new ones or ones I haven't engaged with. Um, and very few times do I have uh, soft vinyl artists come on. Yeah. And so I'm amped that I have someone that makes vinyl toys on. Yeah, cool, man. I mean, you know, I started with resin, so it kind of kind of all kind came together with uh soft vinyl just even the, in the past few years. So yeah. um yeah, it's cool. I'm I'm I feel honored to be on. I mean, I've never done any interviews in my entire career from 2015 till now. So this is kind of cool for me. It's fun. Oh, I love it. Hey, before we dive yeah. in any further, please introduce yourself so we can let people know who you are. My name is John Black. I go by Barely Human or on Instagram, it's Barely Human Art and Barely Human Toys. So we have to start. Tell me about the name, Barely Human. It, I feel like that describes toys perfectly, like Barely Human. Yeah. What made you choose that for your art? Well... 2006 i was drawing um these weird honestly it was drawings of these dudes i went to high school with that were kind of dicks to me and i was drawing pictures of them from high school books really crappy drawings and i was making stickers of them and i was plastering them all over the city i lived in and i was doing some small art shows i started getting a little notice from a few people and they were like hey they started inviting me to some art shows and stuff and so i was like oh i gotta come up with a cool name you know what i mean like everybody's got a cool name and i was like well these drawings are like barely human you know what i mean they're they're not even real they look so horrible yeah and then it just kind of stuck and so then i just kept the name and just started rolling with that yeah there's something good about a name that flows so organically Mm -hmm. it's just you can tell when you meet someone yeah. and it's just force and you're like man we may need to work on that 
but barely human works so well that's so good yeah i appreciate that thank you yeah it just kind of stuck and it really does describe everything i do you know i mean i've never put super super a lot of time into like things you know what i mean like i'm pretty i like to work quick and i'm like i'm very like just like I come up with something and I have to do it right then. So a lot of times stuff comes out, you know, maybe I don't, I don't focus on the uh, quality as much as yeah. maybe some people do. And so to me, it always just kind of fit. It was more, more about that, you know? Yeah. And 26, so 2006, 2006 did the drawings. And then I started doing, um, you know, my friend uh, Lamaird in uh-huh. 2009, he was, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He was a pretty well-known like resin artist. Um, he did a lot of stuff with like Giant Robot early in the days. Yep. But he he basically, I watching him, I lived with him. Um, we were roommates and I was watching him do these crazy like clay sculpts out of like Sculpty and making these really cool uh resin figures and stuff and Mm -hmm. he really started making a name for himself and i I was at a time i was more focusing on painting and stuff but i had you know i always i collected toys but and i had always thought you know someday i'm gonna make a toy but i just don't know when and then uh 2015 this is heavy i lost my leg in 2015 oh and i became basically i i just kind of started staying at home more because i was stuck at home for a bit while i was healing yeah. And then I was working for this barbershop, which, you know, I'd worked there for years. I actually met my wife through it, um, you know, and but it, we had I'd worked there for 10 years. I was kind of sick of it. And I was and I was doing art a lot. And I was like, you know, I'm doing this. You know, this is you don't have much time in life. You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm t- I told my wife, it's like, I got to give it a year. Give me a year just to see if I can make some waves you know what i mean like see if i can see if it's even possible that i could sell art and so she was stoked she said yeah do it and so that's when i started doing resin i was like okay i knew what to do i and i had some ideas and so i think my first one was like a mac you know mcdonald's mac head or mac the knife guy little moon head i put him on a luchador body and i started doing some of those and i was selling them on instagram Mm -hmm. just quickly and then I did like a little uh, resin uh, Garfield that I made. I got some vintage little skateboards and I put a doobie in his mouth and I called him like <laughs> burnout cat. And I, that's kind of what kind of got me notar- notarized a little bit. People were kind of like, who's this weirdo? Yeah. Even some, some people started reaching out to me and uh, that's what got me to go to designer con. And so I made a whole bunch of those to go to Designer Con in 2015 and a bunch of other weird stuff. I was really into Planet of the Apes. I wasn't really so much a Star Wars guy as I was more of a Planet of the Apes kind of guy. Mm-hmm. And so I, I never really wanted to do Star Wars stuff. I kind of wanted to, to, to do ape stuff. So I kind of, there wasn't really any ape toys out, like three quarter, you know, uh, three inch toys mm-hmm. that I'd seen. So I started doing that and um yeah and that's that's what kind of got me started and I started going to decon and then it kind of just progressed from there um Dove invited me some stuff he's yeah, the sorry. the godfather he's like the god, he's definitely the godfather of yeah. the, the bootleg toy you know he, he pushes you and he and he's one of those guys that like you he'll be serious like if you say like I have an idea and he'd be like oh, no no that's that's not going to work <laughs> and you're just like yeah, you kind of feel like kind of defeated, but then you're like, yeah, this guy's kind of right. You know what I mean? Like he 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 does have a lot of great ideas, and I, obviously he pushes everybody. I mean, you know, and everyone knows. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of what got me into uh, really getting into toys. You know, really producing my own toys, and then you know here and there. And then I have getting so into, many like, questions yeah. for you. Go already. ahead, man. Give me some. Give me some. <laughs> I give, Sorry, you, I didn't mean to lay all that on you, but it was like I don't know how to really lay out my entire art career because it's a little lengthy. But it's also, you know, the toy part of it is kind of compact and yeah. like different eras. So yeah, kick it at me, dude. Give me some questions, uh, dude. I have you, you covered so much that that I was keeping track of the the questions. Don't worry. <laughs> Um, so you, we, I got to bring it back a little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. you collect toys. Yes. Uh, How old are you? 
I am 51 years old. Okay. So you had great toys. You grew up and you were already late teens, probably when uh, Mo2 and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. I have a giant. I mean, my brother had a huge collection of um, Transformers, Master yep. Universe. So, like, muscle guys and stuff were always, like, in the back of my mind, especially with my drawing and stuff. You'll, you'll see, if you went back in my Instagram to look really far back, you'd see, like, bodybuilder drawings and just weird stuff. I've always been, like, kind of attracted to that kind of, like, weird nostalgic of, like, a mix between Mad Magazine and, like, you know, like kirby or something you know what i mean like i like realism but i also like goofiness so it's just kind of like a mix that i have always tried to put towards my art you know what i mean yeah yeah and when you like having that where because you are already a little older Mm -hmm. does that mean you just jump right into collecting it's not like oh i'm playing with toys i'm just filling shelves yeah at first it was kind of like it was, yeah. I mean, it was that. And then yeah. I, I, I started focusing more, you know what I mean? Because I, yeah. I started focusing on, I'm a huge Thunderbirds Argo fan. I love yep. Anything Jerry Anderson does. So I started focusing on that. But then I started collecting small things of uh, like Western vinyl. And that's kind of where okay. I was like, I, I kind of got introduced into, well, I actually got introduced into it in um the 2000s i started collecting bear bricks right so i saw Mm -hmm. these they were made planet of the apes ones and so i they first came out i was like oh my god i gotta have what is this toy i have to have this toy you know out of all the old stuff i had i was like i had not really been into new stuff yeah and that's kind of what started getting me into like design thinking even designer toy wise you know what i mean yeah yeah so then i started collecting bear bricks and um and then I, it kind of got me into, like, I think I collected a Max toy was one of my first soft vinyls I bought online. I saw him and I was like, holy cow, what is this? And I, I bought it and the helmet came off and I was like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And yeah. I wasn't really, you know, collecting really so much vinyl as I was collecting like, you know, like action figures and things like that and mm-hmm. like Mego and some other things but um yeah that's that's where it all started for that you know which is like what a great way to start to to end up you collected and got in touch with like vinyl early mm-hmm. on and then you ended by making vinyl and all those things right right yeah and so it's you know that it's funny because like you know i know you've had suck lord on and this and that and, yeah you know he's one of those guys that are like you know, obviously everybody knows what he's done He's he's been around for a long time and i uh was lucky enough when i lived i lived in new york for a couple of years and i was able to kind of go i meet him in person a few times and go to his like little bodega he had in chinatown and uh, he had another friend with him named tone tank i don't know if you know him but he does mm-hmm. resin and he's an amazing artist. And he's one of those guys that I'm probably going to be doing a vinyl with at some point um, in the future. But like those guys, those are the kind of guys that, you know, they push everybody. You see their stuff and you're yeah. kind of like, I, you know, you never want to copy anybody, you know. And it's like it comes sometimes things come off where like oh, maybe that's pretty close to this person or that. And um back then you didn't even think of it because there was barely, they didn't have, you know, we didn't have Instagram and stuff like that. And when we, when I first started, so I don't know, it's hard to, I don't know. I don't know if I'm getting off. No, this is perfect here, but yeah, it's like, you just have to give those guys props where it comes and then, you know, try to like forge your own path is what I guess I'm trying to say, you know? Yeah. Um, And I think that's, what i'm still trying to do honestly you know i'm not i I, every every year i try to try to come up with something a little new but um i think when the pandemic hit that's when i was like i was like told my wife i go i think this is the year i'm going to make a soft final toy you know Mm. i think if it's possible um i and i always like i said since the barely human thing i kind of always wanted to make um a rack toy of some sort or kind of go toward you know go like a mexican bootleg you know more than a japanese vinyl since a lot of my friends you know i knew were already making japanese vinyl but 
you got to be in the club. And I never was in that club, you know, so I never had the connection to Japanese vinyl. Yeah. Um, so that's when the, uh, I started doing, when I was doing resin, Dove invite or not Dove, I believe it was Clutter Magazine. I got invited to a show mm. and that's when I came up with the planetoid characters. I did them in resin and I sent them off. And then someone uh, from Brazil reached out to me, and that's kind of what started the whole uh, my vinyl venture, basically. And you know, crazy, yeah. And so, I so I think um, before, like, and in between you uh, collecting and then um, getting to the point where you want to produce a vinyl figure, and before mm-hmm. you even get to resin. You're mm-hmm. spending a lot of time drawing digitally and physically and all those things. Correct? Yeah, painting. Yep, yep. I'm um, doing a lot of stuff online. Yeah, definitely. And how, like, is this, are we talking graphic design? Are we talking yeah. just personal? Uh, no, mostly, I mean, it was a little bit of everything. Like, I yeah. was doing art shows. Um, I was doing graphic design. I was doing some band stuff. People had reached out to me. I started getting more into um, actually trying to do jobs you know yeah. like real jobs and then um it kind of yeah just progressed and then honestly there was a point so like after so i'll go back here so yeah like i said when i lost my leg in 2015 i i kept my job at the barber shop for one year and then i said i'm done so i i took a year off i really focused on my art i was drawing every day like every minute of the day and then i um met some folks from a place in Portland, Oregon, uh, called sizzle pie. Mm -hmm. And then I got a job in the art department. And so that is really kind of what pushed me because I got this job in the art department. I was working with some really killer artists that, um, were really just kind of pushing me, pushing me. And then I talked them into letting me do a, 12 figure action figure nice set like i basically was like trying to like can we pick like all the best internet artists and ask them to design a resin toy and i'll get them sculpted i'll mold them i'll paint them i'll make the you know i was like basically it was like trying to create my dream job and i did it i talked them into it and so that was my job for like and that was literally my job. I, other than doing like social media and stuff, all I was working on was making these toys. And I got to work with like Tall Boy and all these amazing artists like um, Brian Romero. And I mean, I could just name them all. There's just so many guys. Yeah. But uh, I, and it pushed me really hard on my own to start sculpting and doing things like that. And, um, you know, it's just like all, it's funny because it's just all these things kind of, experiences basically all started to kind of come together where I was like, Oh, I learned that from this job. I learned this from this job. Yeah. And then I was like, we interrupted this broadcast of toys on tap to bring you this. Meanwhile, in a galaxy of bootleg treasures. DOV2, we have engine failure. We almost crash land on DKE toy planet. Oh my. We're doomed. Wait. Salvation! Hooray! We saved the deal, V2! Limited edition custom artist made action figures and DKE toys! Check out www.dkatoys.com for a full catalog. Hooray for custom action figures! DKE! Like in my, you know, the, and then the pandemic hit, and I was like, well, I think I'm ready. You know what I mean? Like in my mind, yeah. I had. I had I picked up a really cheap uh, uh, sculpting program on iPad called Sculptura. I'll give them a shout out because I've done every sculpt I've ever done uh, for my vinyl toys on this program. And it was like a $10 program, um, you know, and I just messed around with it for like a whole year. And then I was like, I designed these toys. And then I was like, well, I'm going to do a resin run of them. And I printed them out and, like I said, the guy from Brazil saw that I did them in resin and he was like, would you ever want to make these in soft vinyl? And I was like, literally my whole entire life. Yes. I have been wanting to make these, you know, make toys. So let's do it. And he, that's what made it happen. That's when I started making all the soft vinyl toys. Yeah. Which is like, 
the luck that someone reached out. I'm always like, yeah, closure, I'm always so cautious. Me when, too. When someone reaches out and they're like, oh, why don't you use my factory? It's yes. Like, maybe you can take a hike. Like, I don't know that I want to talk to you. 90% it's bullshit. Yeah. I mean, how did 90% you... of the time. Well, I kind of, I had, I had put him through some rigorous kind of like uh, vetting. Honestly, yeah. I was questioning him quite a bit before I sent him any dollars. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like I, and he just, I saw what he was doing. He showed me some stuff and I, um, have you ever heard, you've heard of Chance Priest, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Have you done an interview with him? Uh, I don't No, 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 no. I haven't yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyways, he, um, he had somehow had met through like one of his forums or something. Like I was starting following him because I, I kind of admired what that guy was doing. And, yeah. Um, I, um, he reached out and I kind of looked, looked around a little bit and snooped and saw it. he was like legit, you know? Mm. And I was like, okay, this guy's legit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. You know what I mean? Like, what's the worst I could do? I could lose my money and then I have to fly out to Brazil and like hire an assassin. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I'm just kidding. And anyways, but you know, so I was like, it's, it was a gamble, but I was like, you know what? No one else is reaching out to me to make a toy and I've been wanting to do this for so long. And even having close friends that were making soft vinyl toys, they weren't even really saying, hey, John, let's make a toy. So it was like, I got to do this myself. You know what I mean? I'm doing it myself. And so I did it. And yeah. it was the best decision I ever made, honestly, because it really just pushed my art to another level. Tell me about uh, like putting him through the ringer and then mm -hmm. paying that first amount yeah what it was, was scary yeah what was that feeling and then and probably not hearing from my him wife for a little bit freaking out because <laughs> it's yes. no small sum of money no yeah dealing no. with vinyl is never okay. small well here's yeah. another thing i didn't say so he didn't speak he doesn't speak english so we're on <laughs> whatsapp yeah right? we're talking together together on whatsapp and and we're and honestly we had a really good communication he was back and forth with me a lot and so that's where i trusted him because every time i had a question he would immediately get back to me and he'd take pictures he took pictures of the factory he took yeah. pictures of things and we were and honestly we we made a really good friendship out of the whole thing and I, you know i plan on visiting there soon and, and as soon as we can it's just right now the pandemic's crazy and i just bought a house so i'm like trying to do that so yeah um i'm hoping to get there soon but yeah so it so yeah, I put him through the ringer, sent him the money. My wife was like, "Oh God, what did you do?" And I was like, "I'm I'm trusting this guy. I think it's going to be a good thing." And then literally, like, it was not even a month, and he had sent me pictures of it, kind of already in the mold, you know, made up the molds. And I was like, "Unbelievable!" Because yeah, I'd heard geez. so many stories of nightmares of people sending things off and it taking literally years. Yeah. And so he sent me that and then he started doing, he started doing test pulls and I was like, holy crap. I just was like, it literally was like having probably like having a baby because I was like, <laughs> this is insane. You know what I mean? Like it was like yeah. you're seeing this thing I created and then you see it multiplied into like hundreds and you're like, wow, it's, it's yeah. just incredible. You know, it's cool. Such a cool process. So, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I've heard the description of years, even working with like Alibaba, like that mm -hmm. kind of stuff sometimes takes months. Sure. Um, yeah, that is so like crazy to think that it all worked out so well. There's a yeah. factory that constantly they don't they don't have an actual name on Instagram, right? Yeah. It's just like a picture of whatever. It's like six seven four nine 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 one six. Uh, yeah <laughs> user number yeah <laughs> yeah um and they keep reaching out and they're like you if you want to produce toys do it mm -hmm. but they, it's like they don't understand this is my podcast instagram yeah. account yeah. and so it's like man you just saw that i tagged toys and just yeah. came to me so maybe yeah. chill yeah <laughs> it's it's crazy yeah i mean well that's the thing as soon as i produced my first set yeah so i i, I went i went a little ham right off the bat i was like i want to do four figures right out the gate yep and immediately make four more as i told him because i had sculpted i had sculpted like 20 figures right out the right off the bat I'd, okay. i was on a roll i started so i did the first four for the art show and 
I just felt so stoked on them. I was like, oh man, these are fun. Like they made me laugh and it was just kind of fun. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, it was not, it wasn't supposed to be serious. It was literally as a joke. And I just thought, this is perfect, you know, and they just came out cool. And I liked the body shape. And I was just like, I think I could just make heads for these, you know, I came up with two different bodies. And then I thought, man, I could just make like a bunch of heads to go with two different bodies. And Mm -hmm. I didn't put any articulation other than the head, because I really wanted them to be like something you would find in another country, or you would just find at a really crappy dollar store or something like that. You know what I mean? I really wanted them to just look authentically like, Bad. Yeah. Yeah. But not not super rough, but just is enough to be like these are cool, but they're like different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um yeah, that's so that's what I did. I did the four and um it just turned out so good. I was just like ready to go right away with the next ones. And um, you know, ultimately it was I did these and then I was like my ultimate goal was to make ape toys, you know, I, I was, but I hadn't come up with a good enough sculpt. And I was just like, I'd done so many ape sculpts that I was like, yeah. kind of to the point where like, I don't know where I'm at with this anymore. I, I, I want to make it look on, honestly, my, my inspiration was army of the apes toys. And they're like the really cool looking, have you, are you familiar with them at all? No, no, no. What are, the, are um, those? So they're like, a, yeah, they're, they were made in Japan and they yeah. was like knockoff of Planet of the Apes movie and they have their full line, you know, in, in soft vinyl and they have them different sizes and they're, you know, they have, some have eye patches and they wear soldier suits and they're just really freaking cool, you know, and, those, mm. and I've been collecting them, you know, they're from, I think the sixties um, and they just have always been in the back of my mind. So I wanted to make, something a tribute to the planet of the apes but not you know complete rip off but yeah and then i had made you know i i just so that's what i did i made a set of four of those i did a, a you know kind of a dr zayas and then i kind of did a, a general and i did a corn kind of a cornelius figure yeah and then a soldier that basically i had made um another body for another figure that was kind of had like an AK 47, which was actually supposed to be for a, uh, uh, what's squid game bootleg I was doing. Oh which yeah. Nobody really liked. And, uh, I think it still hasn't really, I think when the next season comes out, people will be into it. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we'll get them on the next round. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So, uh, but honestly, I was going to use those bodies for another head I sculpted. You know, it's just one of those things. You're like, I started thinking in that aspect, you know, mm-hmm. more further down the road. So, yeah. I, um, I, I mean, I want to go back a little bit. I have a question sure. about, uh, I do want to jump back to resin real quick mm-hmm. and then we're going to, yeah. we'll come back. Um, so, when you started resin and you did yeah. all that um, using and sculpting, doing all the stuff like the normal mm-hmm. smooth on all that stuff. Yeah. How long were you in resin? So this is a two parter. How long were you in sure. resin? And then what was that first, the first things that you started um, doing and creating in resin? Okay. So I was doing resin from 2015. I mean, I did it up till I think my last resin job I did was for Buona Spoons. I did a huge run of his original Crackle and Kong mm-hmm. little figure, and it was a multicolor. I did 50 different pours for him. Holy hell. And that broke me, dude. That was my final resin where I said, oh, well, I said it was. And then a couple <laughs> year, a year later, someone asked me to do a little. I sculpted and did a thing for a guy, an artist in Portland. That was a small run of a thing, yeah. but that was basically the last time I ever wanted to do it. But I think so. 2015, I started, and I think this was in. I oh God, I can't remember when that was. It was 50. That's so crazy. Yeah, it was. You'd have to go back and look in my timeline or something to check them out. But uh, yeah, that that was the last time I wanted to do resin. Honestly, it was. I, oh, you know, what happened was also during the pandemic, I bought a 3D printer. Oh, uh, okay. 
so that's a whole nother story too. That's kind of where I stopped doing resin and I bought a resin printer and I just started printing things out. Yeah. I was making like, uh, you know, I started doing wind ups. I did, designed a bunch of wine, planet of the apes wind ups and then, um, did some parachuter, the planet of the apes parachuter and a couple of things like that. Things that the, the 3d printer and the sculpting on my iPad kind of took it to the next level for me Yeah, on the resin. So I never really haven't really quit resin because I'm still making resin stuff, mm -hmm. but I'm doing it, printing it now and not pouring it. Which so. I, you know, I had my first experience with that recently mm -hmm. and I, there's no amount of joy that I can describe <laughs> of like, if you don't have to pour, but you still get this beautiful, more detailed yes. like piece that uh, it was just, uh, yeah, it was so good. I don't have a printer, but I got someone to print something for me. Yeah, great. it is. It's like, I mean, being my age, you know, seeing like dot matrix printers to yeah. this, I'm like my mind, you know, I, I try to keep up with everything, but it's still my mind gets blown by it. And I try to like, I, I, I always push myself to like learn something. Yeah. And so the the resin... I'm more, I'm not really doing big runs in resin. So like now a lot of people invite me to art shows and stuff and I'll just do a one-off, you yeah. know, and I'll print it out and make it painted up really nice. And honestly, man, one of the things is I, I'm more, almost more into the packaging and designing of the package and creating the package than I am even making the toy. Like I, it's the toys sometimes become second really to everything else that I love doing, which is putting a cool little, shiny sticker on it and yeah putting you know what i mean like i just love that stuff you know and that's that's really what makes me want to keep doing it you know is like coming up with a new paint run of the same figure over and over and over and try to create a new package for it it's it's super fun to me it's like a game you know yeah i think yeah. the what you're describing i do love i love making the backers um yeah coming up with fun stuff like i made a toy not that long ago and it was tough because the whole like the packaging was it was uh, on a backer like an office thing but yeah. my favorite part was creating all the stuff you got in it and then the package yeah. it came in was a briefcase yeah and so it was See, like that's so cool yeah and i loved that but and so i had to just keep reminding myself like as yeah. i'm painting 25 figures like oh this sucks but i love the packaging well yeah and i mean it's people like you know the retro brand and stuff yeah. like that that guy aaron he makes the coolest accessories and stuff and that pushes me too i'm like i see these guys making that's the fun part just like you said making accessories and like yeah. get making a cool little blister that it holds <laughs> or something you know like that that's what really pushes me yeah and i uh it's gotten so good you know, uh, Yo-Yo Dine, uh, mm -hmm. he, him and his cereal boxes are great. And then, oh yeah, uh, Abracadab, poof, I think that's how you pronounce it. The, the backer opened up to a store, like a pop-up storybook. Yeah. And so it's, it's crazy. Like, yeah. It's just getting so good with yeah. packaging. Um, well, and die cutting and everything else people yeah. are doing. And it just I think I just saw one. Up. Yeah, right. That's that's how I feel. I and that's kind of what I did during the pandemic. Also, I like bought a, you know, like a a cutter that cuts vinyl and stuff. And yeah, I just started trying to like look, get stuff like that. I I got a vacuum form machine. It's because I I had always wanted these things, and then just kind of like I thought I if I don't get them, I'll never like push myself to try to do my own i'll i'll just keep begging dove like can you send me blisters man please? yeah yeah so to me i thought it's more like it's just trying to like like you say level it up and move yourself forward into a you know forward direction um, and not think, being stale you know yeah and the the 3d going into like 3d printing i yeah. my dream so i've seen crystal clear toys before mm -hmm. very few but i've seen a couple that like yeah wow they've come out so good and i figured out how to do it i, I guess but there is an is it um man it's like an abs clear resin or whatever yeah yeah and it comes out so beautiful yeah and the like the work 
it's probably so much less work to get that. And then I don't know. It just, it, I look at that and I think like, that's in my future. If I keep messing these yeah. bowls up. Yeah. I know, man. I, I don't think I've ever poured anything without bubbles. I mean, honestly, yeah. I, that's why I paint a lot of my stuff. I'm definitely not a technical resin guy. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I do it because I love it. I'm more into the art aspect of it. And, yeah. You know, I admire people like obviously barbarian rage, mm-hmm. love that guy. And like his technical aspect of his toys just blow my mind. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if I could ever even do stuff like that, but, uh, you know, it's not for everybody. And that's why I just stick to right. my, my stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think the, I'm finally getting the hard, okay, this is the hard part, which yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's so stupid to say out loud. Like so many of the toys when I'm trying really hard bubble yeah. central. Yeah. yeah gotta fucking fix it everywhere there's so much yeah. stuff and it sucks but like a toy i'm uh, a part of gallery 1988 or whatever they're doing a show in november and uh pop culture and i'm making mine now uh to get it out of the way before designer con good for you good yeah for I'm, you, man but i'm uh, so they the i mean bad on them they said you can make three to five of course i'm only doing three and i'm <laughs> only like and I figured it out and it's um, all of those pores have come out. Like, of course, the ones I'm painting completely have come out so Perfect. crystal clear and it's so <laughs> stupid. Right. It's, yeah. But um, so I'm, that pissed me off that it's well, uh, gallery. It's, 1988 is an amazing place to show, man. That's a great, that's a great venue. Oh, I didn't, I know nothing about them. And so when they, they reached out, uh, it's like, the end of 2020 i think and they mm-hmm. said oh it's going to be the beginning of 2021 and then at the beginning of 2021 we all got an email that said end of 2022 and i was like oh, oh. my god or maybe it was something like that but it was yeah. like a whole year that we've been waiting and so yeah i have no idea what it is it's cool to be a part of it though oh yeah that's that's awesome um so like out of all You've moved into that. So you have the ability to design and do resin that is just it's it comes out perfectly done if everything's set up like Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of like resin though, where you do have mistakes and like yeah. you know, so sometimes what's but what is cool is that, you know, it's you're not pouring it, you're not right, you're not touching it. And you can put print out like I'll print out like five of something at once. I just, okay. So I started out with a small one yeah. and I've recently upgraded to a larger, you know, one that has, it can print a lot larger. And so I can do like four or five things on it, you know, at once, Mm -hmm. like let's say three and three quarter action figures. I can definitely put five bodies, five sets of legs, five arms, you know what I mean? Just positioned correctly. Yeah. Positioned correctly, get them all in there and then print it. And then, Sometimes someone will be a little off a little, like maybe it just, you know, like a little warp or something, but then you'll have at least one good master, which if I was making molds, that's what probably what I would do is I'd print out a really killer master, sand it down really awesome and get it really nice and make a mold. But, you know, I, the toxic toxicity of that stuff these days, I I do so much painting and stuff. I, I, I'm already doing too much i'm like if i start doing pouring resin again i it's not good it's just yeah. not yeah i don't have the facility for it right now so yeah and, and you know what like, that is yeah <laughs> like what is like I, I think that's the hard part right like no matter where mm-hmm. i pour resin i get headaches and i i just yeah. go with it it is what it is yeah. <laughs> but like what does that facility need to look like to yeah. yeah to like make it so i don't get a headache or i'm not i don't know i'm still trying to figure that out i did it in my house now i do it at work a little bit in a back room and oh nice yeah but it's just you know everything's closed up so i'm still getting the yeah like, and it's not even the good kind of huffing like i don't get right i'm gonna just get a headache. no yeah, yeah. <laughs> just sick and yeah cancer. yeah that's <laughs> my fear but i so I, yeah which is cool like i love the idea of being able to 3d print and do that and i think that's of course that's where i always want to go because it would be so much easier mm-hmm. to work with dove and for him to yeah. say like hey uh we're doing the show it's you need 25 to 30 
awesome and then have it done in two days of just resin printing like printing that. yeah yeah um, and it is it that's kind of how it goes yeah so we like now headed back to vinyl yeah your vinyl toys are incredible because oh, thanks like it of course of course i looking at it there's always uh with every artist that comes on there's always a time or a specific like their line or a toy that i just you stare at and this one it's the whole planetoid like it they're so it's you you talked about trying to make a toy that you could find in one of those countries yeah and it remind like when i look at those i have the feel and vibe that like oh this could have been designed somewhere like i just picked it up that's cool and, man and i love that vibe I love like I love the Mexican bootlegs. I have a bunch of those. I love the a uh, couple of the Chinese ones. Well, describe for me that line. Why you went with that specific line and like all those characters that you've got going, and then uh -huh. what made you? Because uh, they have they all share that same aesthetic. What made you want to stay within that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean. I guess so. I did the first four. I did, mm -hmm. um, I did so. I did first, did Frito, which is free, uh, you know, it's like a Greedo ripoff. Yeah. And it was, I call them Frito Lays. And it just made me, it cracked me up. And so I was like, that's the first sculpt I did. And then I was like, hmm, this is kind of funny. And I've never done a Star Wars anything ever in my life. And I was like, this might be kind of fun. You know what I mean? This is something different for me. Yeah. And I want to do it. So like I told you, like, I was like, I want to do it. So people see it and they're like, where the hell did this come from? Yeah. And I say, what is this? Is this new? Is this old? Is it vintage? Is it not? And I was like, I put a lot of time into sculpting them digitally. And, um, I did Frito and I did, let's see. I did. Was it Chooch that came out first? No, he was second. He okay. was second string. So I did okay. So I did Barf Vani, mm -hmm. which is the Darth Vader ripoff, and then I did the Scrounger, which is um, so good. the sound, you know, the sand guy. Yeah. And then I did Excuse Me because I wanted to do a Jar Jar, just because everybody hates Jar Jar, and I yeah. was like, well, I'm definitely going to make something that everybody hates because that's just my style mm -hmm. to do something dumb like that. And then so I did those four. I loved them. Um, they and then I like I said I immediately started sculpting um, the next four like right after those and so I did Chooch I did I call him Barry Six but it's the um, Snaggletooth yeah and then I did Dark Trooper which is you know a um, stormtrooper and yeah. then I did Cup Freely which is C3PO and then I also did an R2D2 ripoff but I didn't really i kind of made him as an extra like i was just going to toss him in when you bought a set or mm -hmm. i didn't know how i was going to do it and i i, I kind of wanted i in my mind from the beginning i wanted to sell them in sets yeah and i wanted to get them so they were cheap enough so i could sell them in sets or at least just offer them in sets just because i love the way toys look i buy things in multiples so like yeah. like if i love an artist i'll buy their toy like a thousand times <laughs> or whatever yeah. you know what i mean like i have like every color way or something but so in my mind i was thinking well it'd be cool to have right off the bat you buy a f set of four you know what i mean and it's just funny you put them on your shelf and it's like oh these are kind of cool and you know i always thought down the row i'd make like a cool background for them or something you know mm -hmm. I just, but yeah so uh, i would my ultimate goal is to make you know the first 12 and i ended up like sculpting um like i said i've done uh i've got four waves of four plus the bonus r2d2 figure so i haven't released all of wave three yet i still have two figures that nobody's even seen that i have i've been sitting on them for a very long time um, oh my gosh which Are is they... i'll go ahead and talk about it i have yes. one it's, it's uh one is going to be, he's a cantina guy. He's a secret guy that's in the cantina. Uh -huh. And I'm not going to say who he is yet, but I'll, I'll probably <laughs> okay. post soon. And then I did do, um, I did a, what I'm calling the twins. I did a Siamese twin of Luke and Leia. 
Okay. So I did my first human figure, but they're two faced. They have two yeah. faces, and it's a trippy looking weird figure <laughs> head that goes on the body. So they're kind of weird figures. I haven't released them yet. I was going to release them at Designer Con this year. Yeah. And um, have them painted up kind of like the old school way. But um, eventually, all the old school paints I may stop doing. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll just be one off stuff and stuff like that. Because my ultimate goal was to have them painted and packaged um, in Brazil to where I could just have them sent out that way mm. eventually. And done cheap enough to where I could get the price really far down and order them a lot more of them. Yeah. And so I could get them basically half price and so I could get them to people for just like super cheap. You know what I mean? And that's my yeah. ultimate goal in the future. Um, but right now it's just still just me doing it all hand painting every single figure and packaging them all by myself and doing everything so when you order these are they just on the day that it's shipment day are there just boxes everywhere in your house yeah well they get them so basically how i order them i order them 100 each oh, okay that's not too much no so i get um I get a giant box. Well, it's a hundred each figure. Yeah. So I get a box of like 400 if I do the four figures and then there's always extras. They always toss in extras. And then, you know, if there's like mess ups or just weird ones that they're like, yeah, you might want to mess with it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a big ass box. And I'm always like that day. I, it's so weird because when they ship them, for some reason, it always says it's going to New York Weird. on the day it's coming to my home here in Vancouver, Washington. And I'm always tripping out on it. And I'm like, so I never can exactly know when it's going to show up to my house. So I'm, it's one of those days where I'm like, just staring out the window. You yeah. know what I mean? Like waiting. <laughs> yeah. And the lady is really cool that drops them off. She's like fully tattooed. And mm -hmm. she's dropped off so many toy packages to me now that she's kind of figured out what I do for a living or what yeah. I do. And she's finally kind of like oh another big package from brazil you know and i'm like i'm like she's very cool now it's like yeah she kind of waits around i've actually driven around the whole neighborhood before and found her at a when she put a tag on my house you know what i mean like that's how desperate you know and like she, yeah. she dropped off and i was like i was upstairs i mean i'm kind of slow like going downstairs so i'm like yeah no i'm like screaming at the window i'm like please don't drive away you know but yeah i love i love delivery day <laughs> yeah i uh, like i can only imagine that that day is so good you open it it smells of whatever chemicals oh yeah just out. chemicals yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you just get to sit and bask in the glory of who you well, are what you've created also bonus is he always tosses on a little some fun bootleg from brazil or something oh, awesome. he's, he's 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 put in like these 18 inch uh bootleg like wolverine that is oh, insane so cool. a couple of cool things he sent me and i'm just like it's always like a really fun time to get that you know what i mean yeah Have on top you... of getting your own art yeah and which yeah. like and bootleg art oh i right. like there's something so weird <laughs> i just about... love blow molds yeah oh my gosh i'm glad you said that yeah, yeah. it made me so excited there is he-man blow yes. molds that are so stupid looking God, they're amazing um, i have the most amazing furby blow mold and i'll have to take a picture of it it's got the most incredible packaging too how do, i've actually bootlegged the packaging i've actually copied this packaging design yeah. in my own designs because it's so amazing and i'll take a picture and show you it's so incredible i'm gonna need to find <laughs> out how to get a there's something about furby that is so stupid and i love the paint that. is like falling off it it looks oh, so I toxic it. i don't even want to take it out of the package but it's so oh incredible. is it in the bottom of the package all the chips yeah yeah oh, i'll I show you it. i'll send you a detailed photo it's great. love it um yeah. so uh yeah i love furby i mean stuff. that's the influence of these toys also it's kind of because i did want to do blow mold but it is crazy expensive is it? It's so, yes. Which is so weird because it doesn't even come close to looking as good as vinyl. Right. Well, it's crazy expensive to get the mold made, and then it's cheap. Oh, you know what okay. I mean? But it's okay. literally like fifteen grand to get a blow mold made, a big one. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a real, like a because I wanted to get. A, I was size, looking right? into getting some. Yeah, like I wanted to get a bank made or something. I was going to make yeah. a bank, or and I still am going to make a bank coming soon, but um. 
in Brazil, not in uh, anywhere else. Yeah. But yeah, it's and it's not going to be blow mold. It'll probably be soft vinyl. You can take the head off or something. But yeah, it's it's something I always wanted to do. So these, I tried to make them kind of like they would be blow mold or something. Yeah. I don't know. You know, everybody loves blow mold, right? I mean, that's like something you grow up with and you're like, I want yeah. to solve and found the most random, like, like you said, He-Man or like just something ridiculous. So yeah, it's yeah. such a huge influence. Yeah. I, um, I think, I don't think I own a He-Man. Every time I come in contact with them or get them, I usually ship them off to like friends that I meet in the scene or something. Yeah. And the blow mold ones, the ones that I've sent off, there's the normal like orangish skin looking one, which is whatever. But yeah. the blue He-Man with yellow hair is so crazy looking. Yeah. And it has I, that weird hilt in its hand. I know exactly what you're talking about because I look at eBay and all that stuff all the time. Yeah. And just like drool over that stuff. And just yeah. like, and then I, I follow a lot of like guys on Instagram that are like toy sellers too, that are always tempting me. Yeah. I, just, I never, <laughs> never, never pull the trigger on it. Just, yeah. It's too much, you know? I mean, if there's, if you're ever interested, I deal with a guy, I I have no idea how to pronounce his name. It's like Carmen De Pedro or something like that. Uh huh. Um, and, Every time he he just will post things, and he uh, only deals in Mexican bootlegs. Oh wow, cool! And so it's like whenever I he would like finds, to follow him. Yeah, it's awesome. I've gotten uh, giant turtles from him. I have a, a um, giant Skeletor and He Man, uh, and like the non blow mold, which yeah, is I'm always looking for Planet of the Apes blow molds or like things. Yeah, I'm always like even if I have one, I'll double it. I don't care. I'll buy like I'll have an army of them. I don't really care. Yeah, so I'm always looking for that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? My yeah. wife thinks I'm insane, but she also kind of just lets me it's fun. do it. Yeah, I don't, I don't do anything else. I don't really drink. I don't really, you know, I'm pretty chill. So she, she lets me get away with a little bit of that collecting. I think my wife is in the same spot. You know, she yeah. used to give me a hard time, like, oh, you said you weren't a collector. Now you have a collection, and she's yeah. kind of mellowed out because she realized, like. I'm not out at strip clubs or right. gambling or anything. I'm yeah. looking at the next toy. Yes. Or yes. like I'm on a podcast or I'm making a TikTok about toy. Like it's such an innocuous thing that I do. Exactly. Yeah. So it's it's good that like to hear other people that have that in common with this. Yeah, classes. yeah. It's good. It's good. She's put up with me for 12 years. So Oh. Wow. Yeah. 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 I um so when you when it comes to vinyl, mm -hmm. um, you said a phrase that I, I want to talk about before we go deeper into vinyl. You said that you hadn't produced a Star Wars, um, I mean, toy or like knockoff or rip or anything. Never. Ever. And it seems like, and I, I'm sure that you would you would agree with this, it seems like when you create resin toys – that is where people gravitate, right? Like most of yeah. my runs with Dove are some Star Wars related something. Mm -hmm. And is there a reason that you didn't want to do that? Yeah, I there was okay. a reason. I honestly that I didn't want I didn't want to jump into that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I there was so many people doing it that and they were doing it really, really well. And yeah. then there was people doing it really bad. And I was like, <laughs> and I knew I would be in yeah. that really bad category if I was to jump into it. And so what I was thinking of my mind was like, I mean, I like Battlestar Galactica. I like those yeah. three and three quarters. So I thought I had those bodies. I was like, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take a head of an mm -hmm. ape. I, I, I just took a Kubrick head off of an ape and I stuck it on one of those. And I started making my own plain old apes was my line. And that's what I was started doing resin figures. I'm like, I, I have like, I didn't know if you'd be, we'd be looking at each other or not, but I mm -hmm. busted out all my old uh, header cards. And like the first one I did was a plain, plain old apes. And it was make America ape again. And it was my oh first my. thing that Dove had me do. Mm -hmm. And it was a yellow haired ape. And I had done a bunch of like, he was black, you know, he was Darth Vader kind of, but also, uh, supposed to be kind of trumpy i guess but this was like 2015 yeah or 2000 it might have been yeah it was 2015 2016 or it was right before he he became president because it was like when they were talking about him becoming president or something 
and so Dove and I kind of made it. It was for you know Decon, and he was going to sell. He asked for like twenty five of them or something, right? Ugh, it was the most I'd idea. ever done. I know it was so scary for me because I had never done that many toys before in a row. You know yeah. what I mean? And painted them and stuff. So, but it was like the what pushed me, and yeah. so I did that for him. And then I did like a, uh, you know, a Mick Ape, and I painted him like Ronald McDonald. And then I did uh, a clear bodied one with silver head and silver. Then I did kind of like a time traveler of like my, you know, Micronauts version of him. And then I did the ape of, I did a, I pulled apart an old transformer and I built a transformer ape and I, you know, I did a full transformer style one. Mm. And then I did, uh, a lawgiver, my own lawgiver three and three quarters, which I, um, there wasn't even one before. It was before Super Seven even had made one, and so um, I, that's what I wanted to do. I kept wanting to make ape toys. I was like, I want to make ape toys, you know. And there, it was before Super Seven even did the Planet of the Apes line, and I still give Josh a hard time. I think he copied me, but I know they didn't. They've, they've they've had that license for so long, probably. And yeah, that's incredible. They they just do insane stuff. But um, I'm just jealous because they never asked me to ever do anything. But um, <laughs> yeah. So that's why I didn't do Star Wars. I was so into apes, and I wanted to do a complete opposite trajectory yeah. of what everyone else was doing. And so I did like you know I did that. I did like like I said I did like a little Garfield bootleg and all that kind of. Stuff dumb stuff it was just more because i was into the art aspect of it too and like i said making the um header or the backer cards was just so fun you know i had gotten a giant stack of the um blisters from dove and i was just like oh my god i can do anything now here i go and just yeah. you know started making a billion different variations of that eight toy which geez i love that you i love that you went on a different trajectory because there's something so gratifying to say like, yeah, I never even stepped into that realm. Yeah. I mean, you know, how can I, when there's like, yeah, I suck Lord. There's just so many people that have done it so good. And I knew yeah. that I didn't want to be that guy. I just didn't. And honestly, it was just like, wasn't my world really. I mean, I, obviously I grew up in the era of star Wars. It was mm -hmm. a good thing, but when I was a kid, I couldn't get over Planet of the Apes. I could not get over them using real hands in like the Jerry Anderson movies for those puppets. Mm -hmm. Like in my mind, all I could think about is those move, you know, the puppets from like Thunderbirds movies. And like, so that's what was my influence over Star Wars. Like that blew my mind more than Star Wars, even though I love the characters of Star Wars, obviously, who doesn't? Yeah. yeah. Every character is amazing. It just wasn't like, it just, for some reason, my, my head went somewhere different than everybody else. Like I always have done in my entire life, I feel like. And it's, I, it's probably why I only have, you know, I'm not like one of these mega internet guys. I don't have like billions of followers or anything. And I just kind of do my own thing. And I'm lucky to meet awesome people. And they promote me and push me. And it's just, I've been super lucky to even be where I'm at right now. And yeah, yeah it's stoked. I'm super stoked. So here's the question with um, resin in your past or one offs, uh, at least all you're focusing on and then vine soft vinyl now. Yeah. Yeah. Where is barely human toys headed? Well, you know, that's, that's honestly a good question. I mean, I have a whole bunch of sculpts that I've been doing. Yeah. Um, but I don't, you know, I think, I'm going to keep going on the planetoids line. I don't think I'll do, I, there's basically, I was going to do some, I wanted to do some vehicles, you know, there's some things I kind of want to do. I wanted to do some monsters that kind of mm -hmm. went with it. Kind of like, you know, you'd have a Jabba or something, or maybe even a Rancor monster, something like that. You know, I yeah. want to do something that's pretty substantial that kind of goes with the line. Like, like, yeah. So that's probably where I'll go next with that. Um, but you know, it's hard to say. I I never know. Honestly, every year is yeah. a mystery and it's it's hard to say where my brain will take me next year, but I think right now that's where I'm at. I'm just going to kind of focus. I have a lot of stock. I I you know, I did a skeleton toy um at the same time and I did a reaper toy at the same time. So I have some stuff that I like 
can customize them all. I can switch all the heads on everything. It's kind of endless for me really with them just having what I have. And um, I'll probably just keep experimenting with those and try to create, you know, one-offs and fun things out of that for now. And then, um, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm always sculpting. I got so much stuff on the back burner that it's crazy. And hopefully I'll be able to start producing some new, um, new stuff next year, you know? Yeah. And we cannot wait for it because your work is great. Oh, thanks, man. Um, my favorite part as I go through with every artist, um, as we close out the episode, the back end is all about you as the artist. Um, and anything that you'd like to plug to lead people to you, to your art, uh, yeah. to any other interviews or anything that you've got going on. This is your you should your go. So let's hear it. Okay. Thanks, man. Well, yeah. Um, first off, I want to thank you um for actually like taking the time to ask me to do this. I mean, it's very cool of you. Um, and I appreciate it. Of Definitely. Course. It's another thing that pushes me. And um, <laughs> so I'd say right now, um, what I've got going on is I have uh, a Creature Bazaar event coming up before Decon. I'm going to be doing some one-offs mm. uh, and a special release. And... Um, I've also got designer con coming up and that's yeah. going to be a huge release for me. I'm going to be doing a bunch of stuff. I got my little peanut toys. I got mini chooch. I got all the planetoids. I got planetoid of the apes. I've got it all coming on, um, on that show. And I'm sharing a booth with candy Bolton again, and we'll be in the creature bazaar section. And other than that, I'm, um, you know, got a, a one-off coming off a video game one-off at the toy du jour show next month hmm. and uh let's see yeah there's probably something else that i'm forgetting but yeah that's about it i don't i don't yeah this year i'll try to make a a more impressionable meet when i see you at your booth at decon let's do it man let's meet up <laughs> <laughs> that way it's not just in passing there's a as you a look lot. familiar you know but i'm not sure if it's just from me seeing i'm not you know i don't know if it's from me seeing you online or if it's just maybe it i do be. remember you from other designer cons i'm sure you've been at all of them huh? no just this last huh? one but oh, it okay. could be like most resin artists that either have a beard or no hair like we all have a <laughs> right look. right yeah shaved head beard yeah um <laughs> there was um as the last thing that i'll let you go uh we yeah. I was, at the last designer con and uh one of my favorite people ever is neil ewing he is just yeah. so funny and uh just insightful and very um good with his work everything and um i walked by i was just i was in my own world just taking a look around all the places and all the stuff the booths and I guess I thought I had seen him and said hi or something, but I guess he said hi and I didn't hear him and I kept walking and he was like, Hey, oh. Hey, Oh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that's so crazy at designer con. I mean, it's, it's yeah. such an overwhelming experience where people are, so many people are coming to your booth and walking by. It's just a, it's just kind of a little overload and it's hard to like focus on any one conversation almost because it's just I mean, being someone who's into toys, you know, and, and then being around all these toy people at the same time, you're kind of like, you feel like a little kid, basically. You're like, I'm right. at Disneyland, basically. I, I'm freaking out <laughs> because right. it's so fun. And, and I have meeting a, all these people, your friends yeah. with online that you never get to see, you know? Yeah. So and there's really this cool. weird, like, especially with running the podcast, like I, yeah. I've, I'm, um, I think your episode will be number 84. So that means there's um, 83 other artists not including bonus episodes and all that, that I've encountered or gotten to know. And on top of wanting to talk to all of them while at designer con, I also don't want to disrupt sales that could be happening. Yeah, I get it. So there's a lot like it, at some point, that's it, really good etiquette, man, honestly, because sometimes people will do that. They'll come, they'll butt into like, yeah, I are selling something. And even though I'd want to meet everybody, it is kind of like, you're like, can you just wait one? I want to meet you, but can you wait one second? I mean, just give me yeah. one second. And You're I think that's really purpose. cool of you, man. Yeah. Yeah. And so at some point, this is future thinking, like 
Mm-hmm. There might be a time when I like book a brewery and just call it like the Toys on Tap Takeover. And it's like if you're a toy oh, artist, yeah. come in there. We'll do trivia. We'll hang out. Have a beer. Let's just do this. Toys on tap. Toys on tap. The next episode. The next episode. It's great. It's amazing. You're gonna want to listen to it. It's not right now though. You're gonna have to wait till the next episode to listen to it. Oh, when's that? The next one. Cool. Toys on tap. Toys on tap. The next one's gonna be good too. So stay tuned and, and, and listen to that. Toys on tap. Awesome.